Hello and welcome. Thank you for taking the time out of your day for joining us with this brief presentation. The aim of today really is just to provide you with a brief update with regards to the government's intention to change the capital gains tax rules and to provide you with an outlet should you require further information. It's quite an evolving subject with draft legislation which may not actually receive royal assent until possibly the middle of next year. My name is Peter Langridge and I assist our clients who live and work in Europe. To introduce you to some of uh, the other colleagues who work within the team and are happy to assist on the subject, my colleague Dean Power, who looks after our clients who live in America and Canada. My colleague Trevor Wilkes, who looks after our clients in the Middle East and Africa. And based out of the Far East, my colleague Martin Rimmer. So a little bit about us. Fry Group were formed in 1898. We're a long established consultancy which is specialised in providing taxation, financial planning and executor and trustee services since the turn of the last century. And we do have genuine independence. We are market leaders in these core areas of expertise. And as I've said, I am one of the UK tax advisors for those clients of ours who work within the globally mobile industry. We are large enough to have a global presence, but small enough to know all of our clients individually. With particular reference to today's topic, we've been actively involved in legislative consultations with HM Revenue and Customs, more of which later. So the story so far, well I think it's probably true to say that the last 18 months or so have seen quite a dramatic change of attitude by the government as to how they tax non-residents on the subject. Back in April 2013, the Treasury announced that they had no intention of charging capital gains tax on non-resident individuals who sold UK residential property. In the autumn statement 2013, George Osborne stood up and he said, from April 2015, we will introduce capital gains tax on future gains made by non-residents who sell residential property here in the UK. That's just eight months after the initial notification by the Treasury. That was then followed up 28th of March 2014 with a consultation which lasted about three months and that's just reaffirmed that this charge will come into effect in April 2015 and apply only to gains arising from that date. And lastly and most recently 27th of November 2014 once again we have the reaffirmation by the Treasury who mentioned that by extending CGT charge to non-residents disposing of UK residential property, we are bringing the UK into line with many other countries. So what does the current legislation actually say? Well, simply speaking, non-residents can be exempt from capital gains tax. Of course, it is very much dependent on the length of the time an individual spends outside of the UK and actually the statutory residence test that came into effect on the 6th of April 2013 has a key part to play here. It does actually apply to all assets, excluding those of a UK trade. By that, I mean if you owned a farmhouse and you disposed of property on the farm, that could be construed as a trading asset and thus not fall within this remit. But for today's purposes, we are talking about residential property in the UK, which can certainly currently be exempt depending on your individual circumstances. From the 6th of April 2015, capital gains tax charge will apply to the disposal of UK residential property. What is residential property? Well, common sense really. It's used uh, or suitable to be used for a dwelling. It does include property that's being constructed or adapted for such use. But there is one exception, and that is communal accommodation, where this is excluded from these new proposals and extends to things like student halls of residence and nursing homes. 
who is in the scope of the charge. You'll get a feeling here. Non-resident individuals, non-resident trustees, non-resident companies, personal representatives of a non-resident deceased person. Of course, you've guessed it. If you're non-resident, you are likely to be within the scope of the charge. It's worth looking at the rates of tax. For individuals, the rates of tax are going to be 18 or 28 percent, depending on the amount of UK income, possibly even a combination of the both. For non-resident trustees, the rate will be 28 percent. And for non-resident companies who are not subject to the annual tax for envelope dwellings, the charges will be taxed at 20 percent. It is worth remembering, actually, that if HMRC perceive you as trading, then the proceeds from the sale will most likely be subject to income tax at your highest marginal rate, potentially up to 45%. Therefore, if you're buying and selling property in quick succession, it's worth taking professional advice to be certain of how you'll be taxed upon disposal. So that's the bad news. What's the good news? Well, there are a few reliefs available to you. Firstly, if a property has been the main residence during the period of ownership, what they call principal private residence relief can be due for that time and also the last 18 months of ownership. If at some point the property has been this principal private residence habitually occupied by itself and then is subsequently let, for example, then there is also a letting relief which will be due. Without being too complicated, this is generally the lower of £40,000 the period relating to the let or the period relating to the owner occupation and is an individual relief. It is worth mentioning though, though that there are significant changes to the principal private relief available certainly if you hold more than one property. Historically it's been possible to make an election as to which property could be the principal private residence but now the government is going to be setting out specific criteria which will need to be met in order to qualify for an election. More of this will be released, uh, information on this, certainly, as it becomes available. In computing of the charge, well, for individuals, there is a tax-free annual exemption below which no capital gains is due. It's an annual exemption, so you do need to add up other capital gains made for the year, but currently, it's £11,000 for individuals. Sounds a lot, but if you're thinking about a property, then that's not going to go far. For non-resident trustees, there's also an annual exemption. This is exactly half of that available to individuals. Obviously, currently, pounds 5,500. To reaffirm, this charge is only going to apply to gains realised on or after the 6th of April 2015. And there will be a rebating exercise as at 6th of April 2015. You can also tell you that there is also going to be an option to time a portion of the gain over the period of ownership. One of the key aspects in terms of reporting any chargeable gain is that the individual is going to need to let HMRC know within 30 days of the date of disposal. If you're not already within the self-assessment system, tax must also be paid within the same time as well. That said, if you are already filing a UK self-assessment tax return, then the payment of tax can be made by the usual balancing payment date, 31st of January following the year in question. This does have a slight tax advantage for those already in the system, only in terms of cash flow though, really. So how can we help? Well, we can provide you with clear diligent help and support. We can calculate the potential tax due and we can ensure that you are fully compliant with HM Revenue and Customs. We can also provide you with wider tax planning assistance as your circumstances warrant it. Please see attached to our contact details. 
but we also have a bespoke email address. So if you have any questions uh, and you want to email them, please do feel free to use that email, cgtchanges at thefrygroup.co.uk. So our regulatory information, just going back to those contact details again. Thank you ever so much for listening, and I hope you found that interesting.